The hair is getting especially high today, but oh well, it's also morning. Here is grade six, module five, lesson one, problem set. So don't forget to go back and watch that intro video um, and then try and do all the work on your own before you check with my answers and my explanations, but there's some good stuff on here. So let's do it. All right, everybody. So this is the problem set for lesson one in module five, which means you have probably already watched the video grade six, module five, lesson one um, exercises or intro. Sorry, it's called intro. And that one goes over um, all of this, the lesson summary here. So I'm just going to read this real quick or let you read this, pause the video, take a look at this. Um, and if it's not making sense, if you're not sure really what any of this means, then go back and watch the intro video because this is the first lesson of a new module. So there's, um, uh, it's, it's a brand new concept uh, for several um, sixth graders because you haven't learned about how to find area of a parallelogram. You've done area of rectangles, you've done area of squares, but now we're going to get into new uh, polygons and how to find those areas which are different formulas. This one's base times height, not length times width. Um, so we need to remember that this is not a 90 degree angle, so we are not going to multiply this times this because it's not going to give us a perfect rectangle at the same size as this figure. When you have a diagonal line or a line that does not come off at 90 degrees and then you make it 90 degrees, the distance from the bottom or the base to the end of that line changes. So you can think of having um, a straight line and I can give you an example of this. So here's my example. I drew two parallel lines, the bottom and the top, and we'll call the bottom the base, right? And then I have a parallelogram that is made up of the top and the bottom lines. So there is a fixed distance between these two lines. So I drew that over here, and we will call this the height of this figure, okay? So the height um, from this line to this line is this red line. And so I can just, you know, move it or shift it because this lets me do it. Boom, right, right there. And so we'll say that the angle created by this right here is 90 degrees and that would therefore be the height. And so the concept is if you multiply this base, right, from here to here, right, if we multiply that, and let me change colors here. Ooh, I like the purple. If we multiply this length, right, the base, times this side, which is what a lot of people want to do because we're used to length times width, then we would get the same result as this times this, right? The length of the base times the height. And you won't. You never will. Because as you can see, and let me get rid of... Um, what I did there, okay, as you can see, with, if I adjust this right here, and I turn it, it is not the same length. In fact, look how long it is. Isn't that kind of crazy how long it is? Look how much extra space there is when I make it a height. It's, it's a totally different amount, all right, but we're not filling this whole space here. Okay, this space up here is actually, by the angle, what doesn't need to be included, but what we do need is this. All right, and so this is the actual area inside the parallelogram, and when we had those lines diagonally, right, this space, because those angles were off, is what wasn't really included because it was below this line, right? Um, and so this is the same size as the parallelogram, but as we readjust them back to their angle, right, to get them at the right size, some of that space disappears. And that is why base times height is our actual formula for area of a parallelogram. It is not uh, base times length or length times width. It is the base times the height from the bottom to the top. So you have to find 90 degrees and then multiply the length of that base times the height. 
And if that visual doesn't um, resonate with you, here's another one. Um, so I made a height of each of, uh, from the top of each of the diagonals in the um, bottom of this parallelogram, right? And so the base here, right, um, is going to stay the same distance. We're going to just consider this the base, and the base can't move. It's the one that's parallel to the bottom, right? And so, or into the top. But if I draw my 90 degree angled line, right, the height from the top here, and I do the same thing here, what you'll notice is I created two congruent triangles, right? And so I'm literally shifting these lines into bringing the bottom over, but I'm keeping the distance at the height. And we already saw that if I just turn these, they're going to be a lot longer. So again, I'm just proving that the space I am trying to find the area of, this parallelogram, right, all this space is the same as base times height. It is not base times length. Okay, so step one in drawing or labeling height um, of parallelogram, when we're trying to find the area of a parallelogram, is to identify the base and the height. So the base and the height have to be 90 degrees. So there is no height yet. I drew in a height that is 90 degrees from the base. And so I would multiply this distance here times this distance, the base times the height. Over here, my base distance would be this. And then my height, I drew a 90 degree line from the base straight up until I got to the top. And now I can just multiply base times height. And that will give me my true area of the inside of my parallelogram. All right, so let's check the answers. Hopefully you already worked these um, and you're just checking. So number one, or sorry, number three, um, what we don't need is this, right? We don't need the length of this because that's not the same as the height. We only need the base, which is the bottom parallel line to the top, and the 90 degree height, the line that comes 90 degrees off the base. So we're just doing 13 times 6. And then our label will be centimeters squared because we are creating centimeters times centimeters or centimeters squared square centimeters. For number 4, we don't care about this side. The 13.4 is irrelevant. What we do care about is the base, which is 1.2 feet, right, and the height, which comes 90 degrees from that base, and we multiply those two numbers, 1.2 times 12.8, and we get 15.36 feet squared, or 15 and 36 hundredths feet squared. Question five is a little more interesting. In this one, uh, there's several numbers, but several we don't need. So we do need the base, right? This is a number we're going to need. Uh, which means we don't need this. Who cares how far away it creates that 90 degree angle. We can draw our height from wherever we want um, as long as it comes from the top to the bottom at 90 degrees. So this is an irrelevant uh, distance. Uh, we do need this height, right? So we're going to need this, um, but that means we don't need our diagonal, right? So there's two numbers here we didn't need and two that we did. So all we're doing is multiplying two and a half, our base, times five and a fourth, our um, height. And so I did it over here as fraction, where I just made it improper, then multiplied, then simplified, and got 13 and an eighth. And as a decimal, I mean, half is 0.5, so this is 2.5. And a fourth is 0.25, so this is 5.25. And I multiplied them and got 13.125, which is 13 and 1 eighth in decimal form, and this is 13 and 1 eighth in fractional form. So either one would be correct, as long as you also include your label inches squared, because our units are inches and we're doing inches times inches. And again, number six, there are numbers we don't need. We don't need this distance here uh, because it does not matter how far away um, we're, as long as our height comes from the top to the bottom, it doesn't matter where, I can do it here, I can do it here, I can do it here. Um, I'll get three and a half meters from the top to the bottom no matter where I do it from. And my base stays the same. My base is always that bottom parallel side to the top that I'm drawing my height at 90 degrees off of. So I need four and a third times three and a half. And I know thirds. Um, uh, there's another video I made, percents to conversions to decimals. Thirds do not work out as decimals. They are a, um, it goes on forever, 0.3333333. It's an irrational number. So I'm keeping it in fractional form. <laughs> Instead of trying to do decimal, it won't work. 
Don't ever do thirds as a decimal, do it as a uh, fraction. And I'm just gonna make them improper, multiply, get 91 sixths, and then simplify and get 15 and 1 sixth. So my answer is 15 and 1 sixth meters squared. So you can read this question, but they're both right. Um, it doesn't matter where you draw your height, as long as it is 90 degrees, or straight up, makes the L from the base. And all they're gonna do is multiply this base, right, whatever it originally was, doesn't matter that this cuts it off, it's still from here to here, that's the base, times the height, which is the distance from the bottom to the top. All right, and number eight, uh, they are the same, because they're both 15 times eight. Right, the height here is uh, eight, the base is 15. Over here, it's length times width, which is 15 times eight. And you'll notice this is also a height because it is 90 degrees from the base. Um, but rectangles make that easy for you. Parallelograms kind of make it more difficult with this diagonal, and they add these lines 10 feet. That has nothing to do with it. You'll notice that the height is eight, but if I were to shift this over, like I did at the beginning um, of this video, this 10 feet is longer than eight, and so it wouldn't create the same thing. Um, so that 10 is irrelevant, we don't need it. Um, the formula for area of a parallelogram is base times height, and so we're also doing 15 times eight, which means they are both 120 feet squared. All right, so number nine, um, we know the area and we know the base. What we don't know, obviously, would be the height since the formula for area of a parallelogram is base times height. So I drew my beautiful parallelogram. The base from here to here is 2.5 centimeters. I then drew a height, making sure it was 90 degrees, or at least my picture makes it look like it's 90 degrees. And then I wrote the equation 2.5 times h, or 2.5h, equals 20.3. And this, of course, would say centimeters squared, um, which I'll put in here at the end. So to find h, I would then have to divide 20.3 by 2.5, which move, then I move the decimal one place because we do not like dividing by decimals. And I end up with, um, I'd be adding another zero here, 8.12. And so 8.12 or 8.12 or 8 and 12 hundredths is going to be my height in centimeters. And now I know my height and I know my area in centimeters squared. And this was the equation they wanted me to write, and this is it solved, h equals 8.12.